The Walking Dead Season 6 Episode 5. You guys, I'm starting to turn into the worried mother, okay? The worried mother because where the hell is Glenn, okay? Are you guys going to let us know whether or not Glenn is alive or is he dead, okay? I know that the suspense... Um, is, you know, what's really, what it, it's not what's bringing people back to the show. What's bringing people back to the show is the fact that the show is what I like to call the bomb.com. But, um, where the hell is Glenn? Quit playing with all our emotions and tell us where the hell is Glenn, okay? But anyway, like I said, this is season six, episode five, and the title of it is Now. And basically what this episode is all about is basically, um, showing us what happens uh, now that the walkers are headed towards Alexandria, okay? And I did bring my notes because y'all know I can sit here and talk for 15,000 hours about this damn show. I can talk 15,000 hours about anything, girl, because that's um, the type of personality that I have. Okay, girl. Okay, let's get into it. So, it starts out with uh, Deanna. She's up on the little tower or whatever. She's looking over, wa basically watching them clean up everything. Cause she's, you know, Michonne is back with um the people that she were with the people that survived and they're basically cleaning up you know the, the the people who are dead okay they're basically cleaning up and everything like that so she's basically looking over in shock that half of her you know half of the community is dead now because these walkers and got in not walkers these um wolves and got in and they didn't killed over half of the community so she's basically in shock now okay so like i said she's standing over the lookout thing and she's watching that and then she hears a scream she turns around and it's Rick. He's running towards Alexandria and there's like, of course, this big ass herd of walkers, hundreds of walkers that are chasing him and he's running towards Alexandria. So when they see him coming or when she sees them coming, you know, of course they're screaming and I guess they can hear him. They open the gate, let him in and now the walkers are surrounding Alexandria. But as of right now, they are protected by the wall, okay? But the walkers are literally, it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of walkers that are surrounding this wall now. So still, it's only a matter of time before this wall caves in, okay? Um, so that is what's going on with that. So the walkers are all over the wall and they're basically, I mean, everybody inside the, the residents of Alexandria are, they're, they're terrified. Which is, you know, natural because they've never seen that many walkers before because they've always been inside of this. Um, gigantic community that they weren't really able to protect other than having this wall up. So they're scared as hell at this particular point in time because they they basically knowing that they did eventually, okay? So that's basically what's going on with that. So Rick gives them the pep talk and, you know, tells them that everyone will come back and, you know, they're safe for now with the wall being up and everything like that. Good thing that dude that got killed I got his face bit off the one that wanted to kill Rick. Good thing he was, you know, in on building that wall because that wall is, you know, it's A1 as of right now. But we already know that <laughs> when you got a herd of walkers and it's hundreds of them and they pressing on the wall, I don't give a damn how strong it is. They will eventually push you down, bro. So, yeah. Um, and Rick basically tells them that they, what they're going to try to do, or at least what Rick thinks, thinks that they should do, is try to make it as quiet as possible in there and hopefully the walkers will leave. But the same as when they were in the, um, in the quarry, when you have a herd of walkers and they're all making noise, it's only going to attract more walkers. So I really don't give a damn how quiet you are. Um, the only thing that will help them at this particular point in time is hopefully if Sasha, Daryl, and um, Abraham, if they make it and they can come back to Alexandria to guide the walkers away from the wall. Again, that's the only thing that's going to happen. But we don't, we, we're not going to hear from Sasha, Abraham, and Daryl until next week's episode. That's basically what next week's episode is going to be surrounded around. What's going on with Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham. And hopefully in next week's episode, they can uh, find Glenn. And figure out what the hell is going on with Glenn. And hopefully they don't find Glenn and Glenn is a walker trying to eat them. Now that'll really be fucked up if, you know, um, Daryl, Sasha, or Abraham have to kill Glenn because Glenn is a walker and he's trying to kill. That will really be fucked up. Damn, girl. Like I said, I'm turning into the worried mother right now. So that's what's going on with that, okay? So um, and while they're doing all that and when, when, when Rick is giving, giving them the pep talk, Aaron basically admits that when he and Daryl were out scavenging, you know, he lost his pack, and that's basically how the wolves got in, and they were able to, 
you know, um, kill everybody like that. So he basically tell, go ahead and, and tells them that that's what happened with that whole situation right there. And, you know, he, and, and, and it is what it is. Basically, Rick tells him, you know, I mean, it, it, it happened. I mean, really ain't nothing that nobody can do. It's not like you did it on purpose, okay? It's not like it was purpose, purposely done. So, um, you know, it's kind of like a what it, it is what it is situation at this particular point in time. So, um, we see Jesse. If you guys don't know who Jesse is, Jesse is the chick that, you know, Rick killed her husband because he was beating on or whatever. Jesse is dragging bodies. Now, Jesse is a woke motherfucker, okay? She is woke, what I like to call the fuck up, okay? She ain't really having it. She don't really, you know, she's not like the other ones at this particular point in time. She, she, she knows that, um, what, what state the world is in right now. She understands that you can't live in a, in a, in a, in this community without, being aware that you're going to have to kill people from time to time. It, I mean, it just is what it is, okay? So she's dragging bodies to the edge of the wall to bury them, okay? So that's what she's doing there. So um, back at the pantry, bitch. The girl is the pantry. I cannot think of her name. The one with the glasses. She's there. And, you know, people are they, people are coming basically saying that their families are hungry and things like that. And there she's trying to ration out the food, basically telling them, you know, you can't come in here and get all of this food because we need to ration it because the walkers are surrounding the wall now so we're not going to be able to go out and um you know scavenge for food because walkers are surrounding the wall so there's no telling how long we're going to be here before we're able to go out and look for more food but they don't give a damn they like you know what my families our families are hungry we're we about to die in two days anyway okay so we're not going to watch our family starve so since we finna die anyway we're going to go ahead and get all the food that we want because the walkers are surrounding the wall. They, they, I mean, they really feel like it's, it's the end, okay? Even though ain't no walkers got inside, the wall is holding up fine right now. They feel like they're just absolutely dead. So they feel like they can sit there and get all the food and eat, eat whatever the fuck they want. And um, that's that. Because they feel like they don't need to ration it because they're going to die soon anyway. And um, so Spencer sees them. And I mean, they literally come in there, girl. They're taking everything. I'm talking about they just getting all kind of canned goods and all kind of shit not understanding the, the 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 what's going on right now basically okay all they thinking about is they belly so spencer comes and spencer, spencer basically gives them, gives them this pep talk saying that it's not the end you know if it wasn't for me uh you know killing the dude in, in the you know the 18 wheeler this wall wouldn't be up and all this stuff and they basically they listen to him they they kind of say he and they put the shit back and they go about their business okay so that's what that's that so spencer talks them out of getting all the food out of the pantry okay so um back up back at the okay corral they're writing the names on the gates of everybody who hasn't returned i don't know if they're gonna you know when once the people start returning they're gonna write the names i really don't understand but that's what they're doing at this particular point in time they're writing people's names on the wall who um the ones who did and the ones who haven't returned yet okay so um maggie you know uh erin notices that maggie's over there you know putting shit in like a backpack she 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 she, she want to go look for her man, okay? She wants to go look for her barber daughter, and um, that's basically what she's trying to do. But of course, Aaron tries to stop her. So when he tries to stop her, she refuses, and he's like, "Okay, since you decided that you want to go, um, I'm gonna go with you." And of course, she she don't really want him to go. She was like, "No, I'm going on my own." So um, that's what happens with that. So, Deanna, we, we go back to Deanna's house. She's in her office. Of course, at this particular point in time, Deanna is going berserk, okay? Deanna, she's crazy right now. She's in shock because all of these walkers are surrounding Alexandria. And she just, I guess she just thought it would never happen. So, she's in her little office and she gets out this fucking piece of um whatever they call that shit where people draw on or whatever. She gets this thing and I notice she's drawing something on there. Now, I want y'all to tell me exactly what you think that this means because I'm not sure what it, exactly what it means. But I'm pretty sure it probably has something to do with the fact that the people were um, trying to, you know, get all the food out of the pantry. She starts drawing um, crops and, you know, she starts writing different, you know, fruit, like vegetables and things on there. I don't know if that's something that she plans on doing or something that she's already done. And maybe she's trying to, you know, remember where she put it. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think about that. Maybe that's something she's deciding to do because she don't want them to be to starve. You know, she don't want them to basically have to go out and scavenge anymore. She wants them to be able to plant, you know, crops and things like that. That's what I'm assuming, okay? So, y'all let me know what y'all think about the whole reason why she was drawing crazily on that board about the crops and all that stuff, okay? Leave it down in the comment section down below. 
So that's what's going on with that. And then we hear a glass break, and she goes in there and it's fancy. This motherfucker is what I like to call a drunk girl. He is drunk as a cool brown, okay? And she's like, or have you been drinking? He was like, yeah. Now, mind you, Spencer is the same one that did the pep talk to the people telling them to put the things back into the pantry, okay? So, she notices that he got all this food. And she was like, so you mean to tell me you gave these people this fucking pep talk, but you sitting here and got all this damn food after you didn't sat there and told him to put it back? He was like, well, that was kind of a, you know, that was the whole plan, you know? Tell them to put it back because, you know, we need to ration the food. And you don't want everybody thinking that they can go in there and get what they want. But, you know, I tell them that. And I'm the only person that's doing it. They don't really, you know, people ain't going to know about it. Basically because, you know, it's just one person going in there getting food. So, he going to tell them they can't get no food and give them give them this pep talk. But he's in there taking all the fucking food. So she, so, she said, so you mean to tell me that pep talk down at the pantry was just a load of bullshit? And he's, I mean, when I tell you, like I said, he is drunk as a cooter brown. Mark my words, Rick gonna kill his motherfucking ass. He, she, he already killed Deanna's husband. Well, he didn't kill Deanna's husband. Deanna's husband was killed, and she gonna, he, Rick gonna end up killing her goddamn son because he is, he is getting crazy. Okay, number one, we don't need no drunks in, in, in these goddamn walls acting no fool. Okay, so Rick gonna end up killing his ass. Okay, thick chick blogs called it. Okay. So that's what's going on with that. And then he's sitting there basically blaming her, you know, of course, Deanna's his mom, blaming her saying that, you know, you're the reason why dad's dead. You're the reason why all these other people are dead. You said that you were going to, you know, protect this place and we were going to be safe. Blase, blase, squase. Like the other girl said, the girl that I think is a fucking wolf. I can't think of her name. The chick that Carl is in love with. Um, I think she's a fucking wolf, but like she said, she said, this place is just too big to protect, and which it is, you know, number one, those people don't really know how to protect themselves, and the place was just too big for them to be able to watch every nook and cranny, every corner, it just was way too big for them to be able to do that, so, um, yeah, he, he blaming her for, you know, people being dead right now, so then we see, oh boy, um, Jesse's son, we see Jesse's son, um, he's out there stabbing a knife to the ground and shit. And Carl comes over and asks him if he's okay. Yada, yada, yada. And the boys, you know, basically like, okay. He was like, well, you know, I'm thinking about going out and finding the girl. The girl from, you know, um, that, that I think is the wolf. Y'all know who I'm talking about. The girl who keep going over the wall and shit. I think that bitch is a wolf. And she was going back giving them folks information. Carl might have to kill ass too. But, um, yeah, he, Carl decides that he wants to go and look for the girl because the girl is gone again, okay? The bitch decided that she wanted to jump over the wall again because she felt like, um, you know, just stay safe. Yada, you know, she decided that she wanted to leave again because she felt like Alexandria wasn't safe anymore. So she decided that she wanted to leave. So Carl decides that he wants to go looking for her. And the boy like, man, look, you can't, you know, I'm not going to let you go over this wall. You save my life, I'm going to save your life. And he basically tell him, you know, if you decide that you want to go, you know, jump over this wall to try to go look for her, I'm going to tell your daddy. And if I tell your daddy, your daddy going to come looking for you and other people in the community are going to come looking for you too and somebody going to die, okay? Somebody's going to end up dead, dying. So Carl stops in his track and kind of looks back like, motherfucker, okay? So I'm assuming that Carl didn't go because I didn't see him go later on in the episode. But y'all let me know. Maybe the little motherfucker this nigga, but I don't think he went. So the boy basically tells him he gonna tell Rick and Rick gonna come looking for him and somebody gonna fucking die. So I guess Carl is thinking and said, I don't want my daddy to come looking for me and end up dying. So he doesn't go. So um, Denise is back treating, you know, back at the OK Corral. You know, the, the Denise, if you guys don't know who Denise is, Denise is, I hope that's her name. Denise is the one who claims she went to school for, you know, to be a nurse or whatever the hell she went to school for or a surgeon. And um, she's back there trying to figure out what's going on with the black dude that came back with Michonne. Um, you know, because he has an infection. And she said he's going to end up dying. So Tara comes in there and, you know, she's basically telling Tara, well, I, he going to die. I don't know what's going on with him and all this shit. So he, she didn't flew a little, threw a little medical book, you know, like she's trying to throw it away from him because she can't figure out what the hell is going on with him and how to stop this infection from, you know, going into his bloodstream and killing him. So Tara basically tells her, look, look, goddamn it. Um, I just came to check on you and she slides the book back to her and leaves. So the girl's continuing to look in the book because she's, you know, she, she's determined to find out what's going on with him, but she just, she's starting to want to give up. So that's what's going on with her at this particular point in time. But she gonna, she gonna get it together eventually. Okay. But, um, so, uh, 
uh, uh, Jesse, she's walking through Alexandria. She notices, I guess she hears something in one of the houses. And she walks up to the door. And Bessie, if you guys remember Bessie, she was one of the residents. Bessie is a walker now. So I'm pretty sure Bessie probably got, I don't remember what happened to Bessie when the walkers there. I don't know if the, um, the, I mean, I'm not the walkers, but I don't know what happened to her when the wolves were there. But uh, apparently the wolves probably killed her and she ended up turning. So, um, yeah, she's in the house. She's a walker now. So, um, Jessie opens the door and she stabs her in the head and she kills her. And of course, the other residents of Alexandria are kind of looking at Jessie now like, really, this bitch is turning into a killer now. And Jessie basically looks at them like, okay, y'all motherfucking close your mouth. This is how the world is now. We're going to have to kill people. It is what it is. It's either kill people or we get killed. So they, they still, I mean, it's still like they just still, I mean, some of them are coming around, but a lot of them are still just absolutely ridiculously clueless at this point and it's just like I said it's only a matter of time before their ass is dead because I'm not about to risk my life okay because you won't wake the fuck up I done gave you all the resources I'm telling you what you need to do and you just refuse to do it I mean I'm sorry I'm not gonna risk my life for that because I'm gonna be dead and then two seconds later you're gonna be dead too because you're gonna refuse to defend yourself I mean it's just ridiculous okay so yeah she woke Jesse is woke okay so yeah um so now we got Aaron you know Aaron and it flashes back to Aaron and Maggie Aaron basically tells Maggie that he knows his secret tunnel so there's like a little um a, a little drop down thing that takes you into a um like a tunnel situation that takes you underneath the wall or whatever so they go down in this little tunnel and um all that shit and like I said she still want to go by herself but he tells her no I'm going with you okay so as they're walking down this little tunnel situation, you know, this little, you know, with the water shit, the sewer, whatever you want to call it, um, there is a ladder blocking like the entrance to get to, you know, the outside. So there's a la they pull the ladder off and there's two walkers in there, like these fucking sewer walkers. And uh, the walkers damn near, you know, bite both of their ass, but Aaron ends up killing both of them. And, you know, Mar Maggie thanks them or whatever. So they get through this little hole situation and, well, no, I'm not going to go there yet. <laughs> That's at the end, bitch. Stay tuned to the fucking end, okay? So, yeah, the, he, he ends up killing the walkers and everything like that. So, um, yeah, they they end up being able to go through the little hole to get to the end. So, um, back at the OK Garage, Denise figures out, like I said, she's still reading her little medical book, and she figures out what the hell to do with this dude and how to remove his infection. So, she knows something about it. You get a syringe, and she's stuck it into his um, sore, and she pulled out the infection with the syringe, Okay. So, as she does that, you can hear the, um, what do they call that damn thing? The, the heart monitor thing. You can hear it start beeping normally. So, she to remove the infection from the man's leg. So, maybe eventually he's going to wake the fuck up. So, now she's, she, she, she's understanding now. Now she's really valuable, okay? Because she's learning a little bit of shit. So, yeah, shout out to Denise for that. Hot damn, okay? So, um, Jesse's son, um... Sees Rick, you know, on the little lookout thing. He tells Rick about Carl, okay? And Rick's like, did he leave? And he's like, no, nah, I saw him on the porch with, um, you know, the, the the baby or whatever. So Rick is like, okay, cool. So um, he basically he, he basically tells Rick that he's ready to learn some shit. So Rick, Rick gives him the gun and, you know, tells the points to that walker and tells him, okay, aim at this. That's your target. You need to handle it, okay? Um, because if you guys don't remember, Jesse told Rick she was going to teach the boy how to shoot. So, but he tell, he goes to Rick, man to man, because if you guys don't remember, he was low-key pissed at Rick for a while because Rick killed his father, okay? So, yeah, he's kind of coming around to Rick right now, so, because Rick going to eventually be his, um, stepdaddy, bitch. Yes, okay? So, Tara walks in on Denise, and, bitch, she's basically telling her, you know, it's, it's a happy moment now, because she figured out how to get this infection out of this dude's leg and shit. So, you know, um, she basically asks, tells her, you know, the the world's not over and all this type of shit. And bitch, they start kissing. So, yeah, Denise and, and Tara are probably going to be um, lovers now. So, um, shout out to Denise and Tara, bitch. So, yeah, they start lip locking and shit. <laughs> and that is what that is. So, then we see Maggie and Aaron back in this fucking tunnel, bitch. And um, they get to the end of the tunnel and they see the opening. But when they get to the opening, walkers are, like, literally surrounding the opening of the tunnel. So... Maggie's like, okay, we can't go out here because number one, if we go out here, we're going to leave this thing open and the walker's going to get through and they're going to end up going back to fucking, uh, getting inside of the fucking Alexander. So she was like, we can't go out there, okay? We just cannot go out there. So he tells her, okay, well, you stay and I'll go. She's like, no. And as she tells him, no, walkers hear them and they come and they, they surrounding the little opening now. So they definitely can't go now. And then she tells him, no, I'm pregnant. 
So Maggie is pregnant. Shout out to the person who called that. I don't know who called that, but shout out to you for calling that. So Maggie is indeed pregnant, okay? And she basically tells him, you know, she was talking to Michonne, and Michonne said he would have gave her some type of sign that he was still alive. And basically, she's going to burn up the pictures that she have of him because, I mean, Maggie has been through a lot. Like I said, she's lost her father, who's Herschel. She's lost her sister. Now she's possibly lost her braver daddy. So, you know, she's been through a lot. And I guess she's, she's coming to a realization that I can't go out here and risk my life and my unborn child's life to try to go and save someone who's probably dead. And I'm pretty sure that he wouldn't want me to do no shit like that. So I'm not going to go out there and risk my life and my unborn, unborn child's life to possibly save someone who's dead. So she knows that it's a dumb thing to do. So she tells Aaron that, you know, she's pregnant and all that type of shit. She, she's ready to go back to, to, uh, to, to, to the house because what the fuck am I supposed to do now? And I know that he wouldn't want me to do that. So, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, let's see where it goes now. Okay, so back at Jesse's house, Jesse's cooked some cookies. Because y'all know she got another little boy, the, the, the little boy, the one that was hiding in the fucking closet and shit. Now she done cooked some cookies. She's trying to get this little fool to come downstairs. He's just, I mean, he is terrified, okay? He will not come downstairs for nothing in the world. She even went halfway up the stairs and he said, no, he said things didn't change up here because there, there were no walkers and no wolves that came upstairs to, you know, try to hurt no, hurt them upstairs. All, all that shit happened downstairs. But he's terrified to go down there now because he feels like, I guess if he goes down, there's some shit going to pop off. So, yeah, that's what's going on with him, girl. I just need to say that right quick, girl. Um, so, yeah, he's afraid to come downstairs and he just, I mean, he just won't come down for nothing. So, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I, well, what you going to do if walkers and shit? I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to come come of his little ass. But hopefully he come around eventually. He might, shit, Rick might turn him into um, the new Carl or something. Because y'all know when Carl was little, maybe he'll turn him into the new Carl or something. I don't know. So, Deanna's aimlessly walking around Alexandria still looking cray cray, okay? I mean, just, I don't know what the fuck she's looking for. But it looks like she went to the pantry to get some more food or something. Or maybe she took the food that... Spencer had, that's probably what she was doing, she took this food that Spencer had and was about to take it back to the pantry, but as she was doing that, one of the walkers that um, uh, Carol had killed, uh, not walk, she, he wasn't a walker, one of the wolves that Karen had killed, um, not Karen, The one of the wolves that uh, uh, Carol, I can't fucking talk, one of the wolves that she had killed, she I guess she couldn't figure out where he had fell, he fell somewhere, but he fell over there in like a little corner thing and they couldn't find him, so... He had eventually turned into a walker, and as Deanna was walking, the, the the dude came out, and he was, you know, coming towards her about the bite her and shit. So, um, she dropped the, the, the food that she had, and one of the bottles broke. But as the bottle broke, she got it, and she was, you know, stabbing him with it and shit, and blood is, like, going everywhere. Now, mind you, this bitch, she's going ham and cheese on him, but she's stabbing him everywhere but where she needs to stab him, which is in the head, okay? She's stabbing him all in the chest, in the, in the stomach. I mean, she just, ch -ch, and he's still coming at her. I don't know, did, did they not tell these folks where they got to shoot these people at? Maybe they just, you know, spurred them on and doing shit. But if you, I mean, I don't know. That shit just crazy. So, of course, Rick comes out of nowhere, stabs the thing in the head and like, looking at her like, bitch, okay, yeah, you didn't, you didn't got all this goddamn blood all over the place, bitch. And you ain't put a, you know, you ain't did shit. The man was still coming at you. Go for the fucking head, Deanna. But she, like I said, she's just a little insane in the membrane right now. So, yeah, um... That's what's going on with her. So, um, Spencer, you know, Tara's, um, on the, not Tara, the other girl, I cannot think of her name. She was one of the people who was in Alexandria, I think. Because it wasn't Tara. No. That was the girl that was lip-locking with Abraham. So, she is one of, one of Rick's group. But anyway, uh, Deanna's son, Spencer, he comes to take over the, the watch of the wall and shit. Which, you know, they really don't have to watch for, you know, people coming in anymore. Like, they don't have to worry about any wolves coming in right now because, bitch, the walkers are basically their protection. You know, they basically just have to make sure the wall doesn't fall at this particular point. That's basically what the lookout is for, to make sure that there's no breach in the wall. Not the fact that we have, we have any intruders that's coming in because the walkers are the ones who are protecting us against intruders at this particular point. You don't got nobody that's going to try to come up in here with this wall being surrounded by hundreds of walkers. So, yeah, so he comes up there, takes over the lookout. And, um, this motherfucker's up there. He's still drunk, eating crackers, okay? Everybody else walking around, barely probably growling because they're not able to eat, um, like they probably want to eat. His ass around here 
eating crackers and shit when my stomach growling. Yeah, like I said, his ass gonna get killed by um Rick. Um, not because he eating crackers, but because he just he he's gonna be a dangerous person, I think. So his ass gonna end up getting killed. So um, basically, right now the only people that are missing is Daryl, Sasha, Abraham, and Glenn. Um, and that's basically what the deal is with that. And um. Nicholas, like I said, I don't know if it was a flashback with the Nicholas and Glenn thing or if Nicholas is actually dead. I don't know. Hopefully it was a flashback, the whole little situation. Or I don't really give a damn if he actually did blow his head off and um, that was him that was getting ate up. Either way, it's fine with me if it was a hallucination altogether or he's the one that's dead and Glenn is underneath that garbage can. I really don't care, okay? So Rick walks into Jesse's house, I guess, to maybe have a little bit of a conversation with her because he's probably proud of her, proud of her at this point. That because you know he he did see her um, burying Walker's next to well trying to attempting to bury Walker next to the wall but Rick told her we don't bury um, we don't bury killers inside the wall we we don't and she was like well, what are we supposed to do and he was like well, we wait you know we can't go outside right now so we wait because I guess he 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 also said that you know Glenn Sasha Abraham and um and Daryl aren't back yet so basically he's probably thinking and said you know they're not back yet so maybe we're gonna need the, these spots for them we don't know so um yeah he's basically saying that they're not back yet and when all these walkers clear out we can take them outside of the walls and bury them that way so yeah he doesn't want killers to be buried inside of the wall so that's what what's going on with that but back at her home he walks in to probably tell her that he's proud of her because you know she's taking action now she's not afraid to defend herself defend her family defend the people in Alexandria defend them basically she's not afraid to defend herself she's awake she's awake now she understands what's going on in the world so he's probably coming to tell her that but as that ha that happens she you know she he's she's basically telling him tell me everything is going to be okay and i guess that was his green light to basically do what he, he he's been wanting to do which is kiss her so they start kissing and shit like that and they passionately passionately kissing and then that's the little situation with Jesse and Rick so, Deanna, we splashed the Deanna's crazy ass. She's walking towards the wall where the walkers are. This bitch starts crazily hitting the wall. And um, as she's hitting the wall, um, she starts to walk off. But as she's walking off, we noticed what I thought when she was walking past a part of the wall. I thought it was a crack. But I was watching The Talking Dead and apparently it was the, the wall was bleeding. So, the wall that the walkers are pushing up against, apparently it's bleeding. I don't know if it's a crack in the wall or what that whole the wall is bleeding thing is about. But it's going to be interesting to find out exactly what the hell that means about the blood dripping down the inside of the wall. So, yeah, um, I'm excited about that. And next week's episode, and that's that's basically how it went off right there. And next week's episode is basically going to be um, us finding out what's going on with Daryl, Sasha, Abraham, and Glenn. Well, I'm going to say Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham because I didn't see Glenn in next week's episode either. So, But like I said, hopefully Glenn is a part of next week's episode but of course they're not going to show us that in the preview but um yeah next week we're going to see what's going on with daryl sasha and abraham how they're surviving out there because they are uh, running through the woods now because the walkers i guess they ran out of you know driving space or whatever so we're going to see what's going on with them in next week's episode but you guys let me know in the comment section below down what you thought about this week's episode and all that good jazz um yeah and I'll talk to you guys next week. And hopefully we find out next week where the hell is Glenn, okay? See you guys next week. Bye!